Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today, we are gonna have a ton of fun because we are gonna talk about making beautiful items with dog and cat fur. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some history. It is how this all got started. I had been a knitter for 21 years, loving every minute of it. And then one day I was brushing my cat and thought, this is beautiful fur. I wonder what could be done with this. And my friend and I went to Northern Florida hiking and stopped by the Stephen Foster Museum. And there they had an old village. And in one of those houses in the village was a fiber room. So I started talking to the ladies there who were fiber artists and said, hey, I've got this cat fur, can I make yarn? And she said, absolutely. You can even start with a drop spindle. And she showed me how. So that is how it all got started. I came home, brushed my cat, <laughs> it sounds funny, brushed my cat and got to spinning it. And actually I laugh and people will give you the funniest looks if you do this and tell them about it, but it is a centuries old thing that people have been doing. It's actually called Chingora. And of course it makes sense if you have a dog and they have fur, you would make something warm for yourself. So when I got started doing it, my good friend and neighbor got wind that I was spinning cat fur and she has the most magnificent orange Maine Coon cat. So she said, my cat's getting groomed. Would you like the fur? You betcha. Got that fur, went to town. It was beautiful. Well, that friend told the cat groomer that I was interested in this. And next thing you know, I was getting a box of cat fur from the finest cats in Tampa Bay, delivered to my doorstep. Diane with Kitty Cat Groomer, she offered to bring it to me when she was in the area. So I went to town. I only was on the spindle for a short while because it was like slow motion. And I thought, I've got boxes of cat fur, it's time to crank up the volume. So that's what got me to the Ashford E Spinner. And that's what I did for quite a while. I just want to tell you about it and give you the tips that I learned along the way. It is very doable if you want to brush your cat or dog and get started with this. It doesn't take much to get started. However, you do need to prep your fiber before you start spinning it. So if you already work with fiber, you may have things like the hand carters or the blending board. If not, what you can do is buy two very affordable dog brushes that are wire. Then you just prep your fiber. Ooh, that's a super short staple. You just prep it. These even pop it off. I would load this up and it pops off and you have some fiber ready to spin. Dog and cat fur can be tricky. If the dog has long fur, long staple, not as bad. But the cats, even though they were long haired cats, their hair was cut and it would be fairly short even though it was a long haired cat. So it's just a little bit more tricky. I would prep the fiber and then lay it out on the table and have to do a lot of park and draft. So I would spin it, get the twist going, and then stop it and let the spin or the twist go into the fiber and as each little one would catch. But it was still really fun and it wasn't costing much and I was thoroughly entertained and I was coming up with great yarn. The yarn that I made was very thick because I just had to take whatever I could get as the fibers were coming together. It was a more of a clumpy way, no problem. With the blending board, as I got doing it more and more and picking up speed with the blending board, you can just put your fiber on here and brush it. And then I would take it off in the opposite way and have this nice sheet of cat fiber or dog fur ready to go. And then I could just pull off a bit and spin from there. So there's different ways you can do that. Now, when you tell people you are spinning dog and cat fur. You get the funniest remarks, the strangest looks, and they think you're a big weirdo. I don't care. <laughs> but 
what that made me do was think I have to make something so beautiful that it changes their mind and that they're like, wow, didn't know this could be. So I started with this carpet bag. This is called the Abigail Higgins because it was from two dogs named Abigail and Higgins. They are Newfoundland dogs. My friend at the yarn shop brought me all their fur. I went to town spinning it. How the way you can do that is when you make it into yarn, I then wove it into a fabric. Then I put a very light backing on it. This is what holds it together. Then when you cut it, you need to draw where you want to cut and then you need to stitch with your sewing machine on either side of that so that things do not unravel. Then you can cut it just like fabric and sew it to any pattern you want. So I found this lovely pattern for this carpet bag online, sewed all the pieces, nice leather straps, nice everything, okay? It's lined, it's got pockets, zipper pockets, it's pretty cool. So then when I show people that I could make with dog fur, they're like, wow, that is really good. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so then we went on to cats. This is from my neighbor's orange Maine Coon cat. And I thought, let's make an elegant little dinner purse. Okay, so very nice. So the parts to it, I always make sure are very nice because if you're gonna make a classy bag, you want classy parts. This again was spun, then woven into fabric, just like the process I told you. And there's a little going out bag. Very nice. I have one I kept for myself. I use for when we go out to fine dining and my girlfriend does the same. If you wanna do something just kind of fun, I thought, well, what else can I make with this? So how about a crocheted basket with cat fur? but I had to stuff it with something thick because otherwise it was a little bit floppy. So those are some really cool things you can do. Here's another bag, it's kind of fun. Okay, just a little casual bag. If you'd like to read a little bit more about this, I came across a great article called Get Crafty with Yarn Made from Your Dog's Fur by Stephanie Gabalt. Also, there was a website for people who don't spin it and knit it themselves. But this website will prep your fiber, make it into yarn, and make it into an article of clothing or something for you. And that's called Knit Your Dog. I thought those were pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna just show you a little bit closer how you can do this. A bit of advice that I have for you is that when you are working with the cat fur especially, wear a mask. I was wearing a desk mask that I had in our garage for when we're doing stuff outside that's very dusty and you want to protect your face or when I'm sanding something and I don't want to inhale that dust, go ahead and wear a desk mask while you're doing it. I know it's a pain, but if you don't, later you're going to feel the fibers on your face and your nose, on your lips, and that's not very pleasant. However, touching the fiber is. Don't let that detour you from it.
Thanks for watching and happy spinning your dog and cat's fur.